Hello and welcome to my channel. So the final season eight has just been released and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the absolute best performance as well as image quality so you can go from this to this along with testing the highest end PC to see how much performance we can get. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing I recommend downloading is NVIDIA Inspector. We're going to be using this to override to the latest DLSS version as well as utilizing the sharpen modifier. Next is Vibrance GUI. This little program is used to add digital vibrance to any application or game which will help with improving color vibrancy and links to both will be in the description below. All right, now onto the good stuff. All right, so before we head into the game, let's tweak some stuff in Windows. Go ahead and search up game mode and make sure that it is enabled. So this will just help you turn off some background processes like telemetry and other Windows services that are not useful, as well as it's going to give priority to the foreground application, which is going to be your game. Once that's done, go to graphics. Okay. And in here is going to be a bunch of applications and games that Windows will automatically find. If for whatever reason your the finals is not in here, click browse and then go to the directory where it's installed. So for me, it's on Steam. So I'll just go ahead and find it. It's not this. Go to the discovery folder, binaries, Win64, and click discovery.exe and click add. Okay. So once it's added, come down here, find the finals, click options. And make sure that your high performance or your dedicated graphics card is chosen in this. Now, for those of you with laptops or even with desktops that have iGPUs, there might be two options in here. So you make sure you choose like you choose the right one, yeah, which is your high performance and click save. Once that's done, come over here to change default graphics settings. All right. So these three hardware accelerated GPU scheduling needs to be on, especially if you want to use frame generation. This is a mandatory um, check. So make sure that this is on for that and it'll help reduce latency. Second is variable refresh rate. Now, if you're already using VSync, sorry, uh, G-Sync or FreeSync, um, this doesn't really do anything, but it also doesn't hurt to just have it on, so you could just keep it on. And the third option is pretty important. So if you are playing on borderless full screen, this will actually help lower latency because it uses the flip presentation model compared to the legacy bit model. So in the past, we would have to use full screen exclusive or full screen to get the lowest latency for games. However, that is not the case anymore with the flip presentation model in Windows 11. Once you have this enabled, you can use borderless windowed mode and get a very negligible, I think 0.5 millisecond latency um, gap between full screen and borderless. So if you want to alt tab out of games, go ahead and have this enabled. And uh, now we'll move on to the NVIDIA control panel settings. Okay, so go ahead and open up your NVIDIA control panel and you're going to come over here to manage 3D settings, global settings. And I'm just going to have you guys copy all of my settings in here. There's not too much to do in the NVIDIA control panel, and I'm not going to clickbait you by telling you that you're going to gain like, I don't know, 360, 500 FPS, like a lot of those clickbait thumbnails. I am just going to have you copy my settings, but I will go over some of the important ones in more detail just so you guys can understand. So go ahead and copy all of this stuff and then come down to where it says max frame rate or actually low latency mode. And certain games will not have NVIDIA reflex. And for those games, you could actually turn this on to lower input lag. Now, this will have to be tested on a game by game basis. So if you do have to use it for a game, you could do it in program settings. Go ahead and find a game in this list. And uh, let's say for Overwatch 2 that I wanted to add low latency mode, I could do it from here. Right. And then the same thing goes for max frame rate mode. Um, this is basically just a driver level for, uh, frame limiter that you can use instead of uh, in game or RTSS. Those, those are the other options. It, for, for whatever reason, a driver level frame rate cap works better for frame time. You can go ahead and utilize that in here. The next option is monitor technology. I personally use G-Sync compatible because I don't like screen tearing. So um, yeah, just have G-Sync in here if you want the same result. Otherwise, you could use fixed refresh and you could just leave it at that. The rest of this stuff, go ahead and copy except shader cache. Um, this thing, you're going to want to keep 100 GB. And the reason for that is that some games for, I don't know the exact reason, but certain games when you keep a higher shader cache size, if it uses driver level shader caching, the higher the storage in here, the better it performs. In the case of Elden Ring, there's much less stuttering if you keep a higher ca uh, cache size here. So you can go ahead and try it out based on whatever games you play and see uh, how it reacts to this. But in my experience, across a wide variety of games, nothing has happened with this. So just leave it on. Copy the rest of this and vertical sync needs to be on if you are using G-Sync um, because these two together are supposed to be enabled and it will stop your FPS from going above your monitor's refresh rate, which will then reduce the frame buffer or render queue between the CPU and GPU to keep the latency low and the screen tearing will stop, uh, especially with reflex enabled in game as well to help with input lag. 
So that is what how I prefer keeping it. But you guys are free to experiment with whatever you need based on your use case. And now we'll go into the game and take a look at the graphic settings as well as the comparisons. All right, so go ahead and open up your game and go to your video settings. The first option is going to be window mode. I personally play on borderless full screen. And because of that game mode optimized window setting that we did, uh, the latency is going to be pretty much negligible, if any at all. So go ahead and keep borderless full screen if you also prefer all tabbing out of your game frequently and you don't want any stuttering. Next is going to be NVIDIA DLSS frame generation. Keep this disabled. The only way that this would be enabled is if you play very casually and you care more about smoothness rather than input lag or you're not a very competitive player. Then by all means, go ahead and try frame generation and it's going to make the game feel smoother. You can experiment with this if you want as well if your base frame rate is higher than 240 FPS, if you have like a 500 Hz OLED or whatever. Uh, go ahead and try this out, see how it feels, and um, yeah, we'll just leave it to you. V-Sync is going to be disabled in-game because it adds quite a bit of input lag, so it's usually in most games you want to leave this disabled. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is pretty nice, so if you are CPU-bound, keep it on. If you are GPU-bound, keep it on plus boost. Well, if you're CPU and GPU-bound, you could also keep it on plus boost because this is gonna, just going to sync your CPU and GPU render time or render queue just to minimize the latency to as uh, low as it can. So mess around with this based on whatever configuration you have. Frame rate limit, you can go ahead and find your average FPS based on multiple matches, jot down whatever you find and lock it to the most common value you see. It's good to do this because if you find a good frame rate cap, right, it's gonna help with frame times and frame consistency and when your GPU and CPU are not going up and down, up and down, trying to push out as many frames and they are synced together, it will actually help with input lag and consist frame consistency as you are playing the game. So find the base number that your PC can reach and set it in here. Next is going to be your upscaling stuff. So I personally prefer to use NVIDIA DLSS with the Transformer model. And I will show you how to update this to the latest Transformer preset in uh, NVIDIA Inspector later. But anyway, for NVIDIA guys, I highly suggest you use NVIDIA DLSS because it has the absolute best image quality to performance. And for the rest of you guys, if you have AMD cards, you can use FSR3. Um, it is not as good as Intel XCSS or uh, TSR. Do not use TAAU, okay? This is kind of outdated and it looks pretty shit. I'll show you a comparison between all of these upscalers after this so you have a better idea. But yeah. If you have um, TSR set for any of the graphics cards, TSR is actually not so bad. Like for, nat for native, it's actually really good. Um, even at 1080p, which is 75% of 1440p, it looks decent. And even down to 50% if you want maximum performance. And if you're especially GPU bound, TSR at 720p does not look that bad either. I think it's second best after DLSS. And we can go ahead and compare all of the upscalers side by side so you could see for yourself. So I've gone ahead and laid out the upscalers on the left based on the best image quality and on the right based on the worst image quality. So let's start with DLSS transformer model on the left side. You can see that it has a very sharp and clear image even at 720p. And I've made sure to match all of the upscalers on resolution scale for TSR to be 720p. So we have an apples to apples comparison. Now back to DLSS, it's going to have much better image uh, stability. It's going to have better sharpness and it's going to have much less ghosting than the rest of these upscaler options simply because a transformer model is more advanced in terms of upscaling. So for NVIDIA guys, I highly suggest you guys try out the DLSS transformer model. And it does come at a slight performance cost compared to the rest, maybe about 10%. But go ahead and experiment with the different performance presets, whether you want balance, quality, or performance. It's going to be entirely up to the GPU you have. For the rest of you guys on AMD and Intel, I only suggest using TSR and XCSS because those have better image stability and slightly less ghosting than FSR and especially TAAU. TAAU is completely unusable in my opinion unless you raise the resolution slider to higher resolution, but then it looks kind of shit and it flickers and it takes up more FPS compared to TSR. So there's actually no reason to use TAAU anymore over a TSR or XCSS. So yeah, for everyone else without NVIDIA, use TSR and XCSS for NVIDIA. Experiment with DLSS, CNN, or Transformer model toggles for the best performance. And now let's head back to the game for the optimized graphic settings. All right, so once you're back in the game, go ahead and click video settings again and come down here to the graphics section. So first up is going to be field of view. This is personal preference. Feel free to set this to whatever you're comfortable with based on your sensitivity, monitor size, etc. And then motion blur and lens distortion are going to be disabled. 
anything that gets in the way of visibility is never a good idea in multiplayer games. So I'll go ahead and disable these two. Now for the graphics settings, these settings are going to be for people who have higher end GPUs. I would recommend at least minimum 4070 or higher for these settings. This is for you if you want good image quality and graphics. So go ahead and copy these settings for multiplayer. This is going to be, I guess, not completely resource intensive, but just enough to where it looks good. And you still get some performance, especially in combination with the upscalers. So go ahead and copy this if you care about uh, image quality graphics. Obviously, if you have a weaker GPU, do not put any RTX and do not put any of these settings. Just put this all the way down to low and turn this to static. What the fuck is that noise? Turn this to static. So that's pretty much it, dude. Honestly, I am kind of disappointed that there's not a config file that we could tweak. And I really like doing that stuff. But for this game, we're locked just to the in-game graphics settings. And any potato mode tweaking or mods using NVIDIA Inspector can probably get you banned. So I'm not going to show you that. But yeah, this is going to be the best way to set up the game for performance and image quality. So hopefully uh, it's able to help you out. But now we'll look at the comparison between default settings, optimized settings and lowest settings on two PCs. So you can see how the performance scales on a mid range and a high end PC. First up is going to be the mid range PC, which has a Ryzen 5600X and an RTX 4060. You can see that it actually scales pretty well compared to TSR default settings, which is a mix of high and ultra that it defaults to compared to the 1440p DLSS lowest settings, which will give it a pretty decent uh, FPS boost. Now, this is a training range, so the gains are generous since there's not much happening in this, but it's still within the ballpark, and it's nice to see the game is scaling quite well on a mid-range PC, and it should be much more playable this way with the lowest settings as well as DLSS transformer model. Now, for the optimized settings, it's still pretty good, but if I had to choose my way of playing, it would still be the lowest settings because the image quality holds up rather well and you get more performance, which is always nice. And here we have the high-end PC with a Ryzen 9800X 3D and an RTX 5090. You can see that even at 1440p TSR default settings, we're getting over 200 FPS, but keep in mind in an actual match, it's more like 180 to 190 or even lower sometimes depending on load. With DLSS optimized settings, we're getting a pretty good uplift in performance. And with DLSS lowest settings, we're getting an even greater uplift. Now for the DLSS lowest settings, that's what I recommend for those of you guys who are trying to reach 360 hertz. It's not going to be reaching 360 hertz all the time in an actual game. And especially not if you guys are running these parts stock or similar parts at stock settings. You're going to need to tune your CPU and your GPU in terms of overclocking and undervolting to get the best performance, especially with the CPU using PBO, which this game is very CPU heavy. So if you're running stock, you're not going to be hitting those numbers. And on that note, I do provide PC tuning services and you could hit me up on Discord if you want to get your CPU and GPU tuned. I'll sit with you on a Discord call and we'll go through everything. We'll undervolt and overclock your CPU. We'll undervolt and overclock your GPU to get the best power draw, temperatures and performance. So again, hit me up on Discord if you do need help with that. And now we'll move on to the NVIDIA Inspector tutorial and Vibrance GUI. All right, so go ahead and open up NVIDIA Inspector. And you're going to come over here where it says Profiles and type in the finals and click that. So once you see the Discovery Win64 Shipping.exe, Discovery EXE and the finals EXE, that's how you know you're on the right game profile. Then you're going to come over here to where it says three anti-aliasing, go to sharpening value and sharpening filter. First up is going to be enabling the sharpening filter. So click on. And then for the value, you could put anything from zero to one right here. I recommend you guys experiment with whatever you find appealing in terms of sharpness. Personally, for me, it's between 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, depending on the game I'm playing with whatever art style it has. But yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys. And then scroll down here to five common section and you'll find all of the DLSS overrides. The important ones for upscaling is going to be this DLSS enable override. So press on. And then forced letter preset is going to be preset K for the latest transformer model. However, if you just want to keep it simple with using whatever is the latest preset, you could just put always use latest in here. And then the other thing I want to show you guys is down here is resizable bar. For Unreal Engine 5 games, having resizable bar enabled does help, especially for the case of Marvel Rivals and the finals that I've seen. So if it's not enabled already, go ahead and enable it and see if you get an FPS boost and then just click apply changes. And now we'll take a look at the sharpness differences with on and off in the game. 
So here we are back in the game with DLSS and sharpness filter turned off on the left and DLSS and sharpness filter turned on on the right. And at a first glance, it might not be able to tell maybe because of YouTube compression. But if we zoom in here and really take a look at the background detail, you should be able to see that the tree uh, foliage and leaves at the windows, a lot of the edge geometry has a lot better detail and sharpness retrieval after turning on the filter. You could even see the uh, season eight artwork for the Odin looking guy on the right. The clarity on the artwork is much better on the right side and everything is much better defined. So it's nothing too mind blowing, but it's just a little sharpness filter to help with visibility. And now we'll move on to Vibrance GUI so I could show you guys how to add digital Vibrance to the game as well. All right, so once you have Vibrance GUI downloaded, go ahead and double click this little executable file and it'll open this small window. So what this program does is it allows us to add digital Vibrance to any game or application on a per game basis. So you don't have to use the um, you know legacy window slider where putting the Vibrance level to 100 here or adjusting it here would adjust the entire windows. The older method was to go into the NVIDIA control panel like this, come to adjust desktop color settings and set it here. But again, this would affect the entire windows and that's not ideal. So now we have a little program here we could use to add digital vibrance to just the game. So if you want to add the finals here, you can click add manually, okay, and find the install path for the game. So mine's going to be in Steam, go to the finals, go to discovery, binaries, Win64, and add discovery-e.exe. That's going to be the main game executable and click open. So once it's in here, double click this, and you could just set your in-game vibrance here. I prefer 70% for my specific monitor panel, but yours might be different or... It might be a different color gamut. So you can mess with this based on your preference and see what you like and then click save. And also make sure you have auto start vibrance GUI affect primary monitor only and never change the resolutions checked. So what this will do is every time you start your PC, this will be running here in the tray like this. So you never have to manually click this every single time. And you can go ahead and set this for all of your games and it'll auto start every time with your PC. And now I'll show you what it looks like with and without vibrance GUI so you can see for yourself. On the left side, we have Vibrance GUI set to off, and on the right, we have Vibrance GUI set to on with 70% of the digital Vibrance slider. You can immediately tell that on the right side, there's a lot more color and vibrancy. This will help create better color contrast during gameplay and may even help with visibility for those of you who prefer a high color saturation. In my opinion, the game looks a lot more appealing this way, and there is no performance cost to using this as well, especially compared to something like NVIDIA filters, which would take up to 15 to 20% performance cost just for simple sharpness slider and uh, vibrant settings. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. I hope this performance guide was able to help you guys out. And if it did, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss more guides like these in the future for all your favorite games, including Battlefield 6 and Black Ops 7. I'll see you in the next one.